So I'm delighted to be joined today by Nick Marshall. Nick is director at KSS, a globally renowned sports uh, design company. Uh, so Nick, perhaps you can just start off by telling us all a bit about yourself, your career highlights and sort of any sort of standout moments. Yeah, hi Katie, how are you? Um, yes, as, as you say, I'm director at KSS, um, uh, one of the, uh, the, the owners of, of the business and um, I've been, been with the company for about 18 of its uh, nearly 29 years now. And uh, we're obviously looking forward for our, our 30th, 30th birthday next year. Um, uh, yeah, so in, in that period of time, I've, I've been working on sports and education projects primarily. Um, one of the, the uh, two of the three uh, main sectors that we work in, um, the other being residential. Uh, and yes, when I, when I started, I, I started working on, on some uh, absolutely fantastic projects um, in, in the education sector. And I, and I migrated over a period of time into um, doing sports projects as well. And, and I, I do dabble in, in residential. Um, and in that time, I, you know, I've been, been lucky enough to do some absolutely fantastic um, further education projects for um, uh, places in Kent and, and Essex. Um, and I... And then I, I migrated over into to sport and have, you know, have a client in Crystal Palace, work for AFC Wimbledon, uh, and, and have been party to a number of the, the large projects that, uh, that the company has done over, over a period of time. So I've, I've had a, a varied career, but very enjoyable one. And obviously you mentioned their uh, AFC Wimbledon and their new Plough Lane Stadium. Um, so I know obviously you're on site uh, with that project at the minute, but you know what does on site look like at the minute, sort of in the middle of the pandemic? Yes, it's. Um, I, I think luckily for that particular project, it was quite late in in the day. So um, the the contractor Buckingham Group um, had to amend some of their health and safety procedures in order to, to continue. So right at the beginning of, of the lockdown, um, that was what they focused on two, two or three weeks of just making sure that they could continue operations on site. And then around that time, um, most of the superstructure had been, had been built, bits of cladding were going on. Uh, and they were starting to prep the, the, the site for the pitch. So uh, the, the latest press that people will have seen will be uh, that the grass started to grow. So it started to look like a football ground um, and that the, uh, um, the envelope of the building is, is um, nearly all the way completed. Um, and obviously they're turning their attention to a lot of the interiors. And the, the latest bit of work that we've been looking at is how to make the, the, the project feel like a football ground um, when, when it actually opens, which is um, as a phased project, looking at putting in temporary seating, but a, a temporary seating system on the other three sides that, that makes it feel like a, a, a completed ground and a proper enclosure. Uh, and, you know, sort of obviously, normally as lead architects, I'm sure you'd be on site uh, the whole time. But, you know, what is it like sort of running a project like this, you know, when we have the social distancing and lockdown measures? Uh, not, not very easy is, is the short answer. I, I think we would, uh, as a company, we'd like to be um, going on site and looking around. Um, the, the, the very short answer to your, to your question is that we're, we're not going to site um, unless it's absolutely necessary and, and even then we're, we're trying to make sure that um, that uh, our staff are as safe as possible and if, if we can we're trying to do that remotely still um, with the the, the the team of contractors and uh, subcontractors on site so a lot of it is done remotely um, we've asked the contractor to update us with site photos which they do regularly um, and, and ultimately, it's trying to solve things with technology. So we're, we're using the technology that, if you like, was frozen at a point in time that, that uh, we had everywhere um, in order to try and solve, solve the problems. Um, it's a, it's a well-run and well-progressed project. So uh, the, that's certainly we're not trying to solve uh, difficult issues. It, it, it tends to be um, a case of resolving uh, you know, minor, minor design 
uh, variations and all those sorts of things. And then obviously, you know, as well as sports venues, KSS is renowned for working on elite training facilities. Um, and I know you did mention it there earlier, you work a lot with Crystal Palace. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, can you sort of tell us more about the, the new academy project? Yes, yeah, so, so um, Crystal Palace is one of three that we're working on at the moment. Uh, the other two being uh, the completion of both Leicester Cities and Liverpool's. Um, those two projects are progressing at, at enormous pace. Uh, Liverpool started slightly, um, primarily because the contractor um, needed to re-establish uh, um, supply routes as opposed to there being a, a particular problem on site with construction. Um, but they, they both are, are anticipated to, to complete um, this year. But who, who knows quite what the, what the football year is going to be, what the football calendar happens to be. Um, that They were obviously aiming for a, an open date in time for the, the uh, closed season. Crystal Palace is, is very similar, slightly different programme. Um, they started on site um, inside the, the academy that we, we got approval for a few months back. Um, and we're, we're now working with the, with the club and the contractor um, to finalise the, the, the final specification. Uh, and um, yes, they, they should be well, prog well progressed um, in the next few months to, to start the first phase of, of that work. Uh, and obviously you mentioned that, you know, you're working on the Liverpool Football Club's um, elite training, but you, you were also involved for the, the redesign of their new main stand. Um, and obviously then, you know, we're going to be hopefully COVID allowing uh, having the ALFD international event um, in the new main stand at, at Anfield later on this year. Um, so, you know, when it comes to sort of hospitality and the premium seat side of things, um, how do you foresee the offering sort of needing to evolve post-pandemic? Well, that, that is the uh, $64 million question. I think, I think people are trying to ask what, what does um, a, a, a crowd-based event look like um, post-lockdown, post-COVID-19? And I think the answer is is uh, nobody knows quite yet. Um, I think the the things that we're we're looking at um, in the future are, are obviously based on what the the spread rate is and, and whether people can be tested and all those sorts of things. So there's a there's a medical bias to to the answer. Um, in reality, I, I don't think a, um, a an event will be possible at the capacities that you know most grounds are able to hold or most venues are able to hold um, and, and there is a point at which um, I think it becomes un untenable so I, I, I think um, you know the immediacy will probably see behind closed doors um, sports events um, obviously other things have uh, have been tried with uh, sort of drive-in type concerts and all those sorts of things but I think sports events will be behind closed doors to begin with and that will give the the players and, and um, athletes the, the, the time to sort of bed in and, and reassert their fitness um, and, and I noticed today that the phase two of the Premier League's project restart has just been released so um, it'll be interesting to see what what their next steps are um, but Given uh, what we've seen in the Bundesliga, I can't really see that behind closed doors games are ever going to have the same sort of atmosphere and environment. Um, uh, yeah, very, very strange sort of training, uh, training game um, type of atmosphere that you get from being able to hear the coaches over the <laughs> over anything else. Um, so I, I think we'll have to wait and see. I think it's a really difficult question to answer. Um, uh, yeah, and I, and I think what will end up happening is that, that things will progress very slowly and we, we might get to a point where actually people will be comfortable um, being in those sorts of environments um, and things will return to normal. But I, I'm not sure if there are interim steps that will, will be taken. Um, sort of moving forward post-COVID, which I know all of us can't wait for, 
Uh, but, you know, so how do you foresee the whole sort of sports venue design evolving uh, sort of over the next two to five years? I think before, um, before COVID happened, I think we were seeing a trend towards um, much broader inclusivity, um, probably through the use of technology. Um, so I, th I think there's the, the, the capturing of the tribalism of, of things like um, football and, and rugby events. Um, certainly that, that type of technology is going to move forwards. Uh, and I think actually that probably would have been uh, pioneered a little bit further um, because of the lockdown that people are looking to, to find a way of um, supporting their team and being part of a, a more global community. So I think we'll see um, an increasing trend for technology to play a part in, in a broader um, uh, uh, sports uh, communities, those sorts of things. And then I think from a hospitality perspective, I think we're going to see, uh, um, again, a broadening of, of the offer, um, more akin to a sort of shopping mall style of, of um, choosing what you want to, what you want your experience to be and going to, to um, different places in, in, in a ground or, or a venue um, so that you can mix and match your experience at, at any particular game and, um, and find what suits you on any particular day. So I think, I think um, venue design is probably going to evolve um, to allow more choice um, and for people to tailor the, the experience that, that they want. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you, Nick. We shall look forward to uh, seeing you at Anfield uh, later on this year. Fingers and everything else crossed. Yes. Uh, maybe we'll even get to check out the new Liverpool Training Academy whilst we're there as well in Liverpool. Uh, so thank you for your time and uh, we'll speak to you soon.